Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to talk about a method of inverting a given convergence series. Now this is not uh, a method that I have never shared with the public before. Uh, in fact I have explained Newton's method and I have my own method which I'm not prepared to share at this time. But this is a much easier method than the one that I described in an article I wrote a long time ago called How Arc Length Was Derived. So without further ado, let's begin. Now, the article I wrote was called How Arc Length Formula Was Derived, and it's pretty detailed because it shows how uh, using even the new calculus you can find uh, the arc sine function and once you find the arc sine function you can invert it using Newton's method which is extracting the root and then finally arriving at the sine series. Now uh, you might recall that Newton used this x-ordinate here and not the blue one. He could have used either because this arc length here has the same measure as this angle and this angle has the same measure as this arc length here. So uh, what Newton did was he took the series and inverted it through a process called extracting the root, um, which is this process here. And Newton also discovered this arc length formula from the hyperbola, which gives the length of any circle arc if measured from zero to one or zero to whatever the radius is would give you uh, a quarter of the circle arc okay so i'll i'm not going to spend time with this i'm going to close this uh, article and go to how you can invert a power series in a very simple way so the arc sine series is given by this series here, and of course this notation is exactly the same a meaning as arc sine x and of course in mainstream mathematics this is written in this very silly way with infinity with an infinity symbol but in actual fact it has nothing to do with infinity and you'll notice uh, if you read this article which I'll put a link to in my details section uh, mainstream academics don't even understand their own theory so not to waste any more time on that uh, let's carry on. So this is how we'll find the inverse. We'll note first of all that x is equal to sine, x is equal to the sine of the arc sine of x. Yes, and we'll note also that um, we can find an inverted series for any power series or Taylor series that converges by writing out the coefficients like this, and, and they're written as c1, c3 because they correspond with the indexes of the y's. I, one could have written c1, c2 but it just makes it easier to work with. So the idea now to invert this series here that I'm pointing to, this series, um, so that we can find the sine series, okay? And so the ill form concept of infinity has nothing to do with any of the inversion process or any part of it. And of course, the Gabriel polynomial is proof of this, where there are always a fixed number of terms. Um, of course, uh, it can vary depending on the number of continuous derivatives, but it's always a fixed number of terms. And the Gabriel polynomial has no error term, unlike the Taylor series, uh, which is far inferior to the Gabriel polynomial. So in the next step, what we do is we replace each y in the previous slide by the arc sine of x, because y is equal to the arc sine of x. So we do this where we substitute for each of the y's arc sine of x. Then we calculate these powers. So the first one obviously is what we started out with, this. And then we can calculate the square, which is this result. Finally, the cube, which is that result. And arc sine x to the power of five, which is this result. And then we can proceed to uh, find the inverse series as follows. First of all, we note that the entire uh, series must equal to x, therefore c1 times arc sine of x equal to x means that the first one is equal to 1, right? 
and so subsequent coefficient sums must be equal to zero. However, since what is being computed is either x or y or sine y, each new partial sum will provide a new approximation to sine y, right? So we can do the calculation as follows and say uh, that if we pick out the uh, terms in x3 from each of the uh, coefficient arc signs, then we'll have that c3 is equal to minus a 6, which is, by the way, one of the first coefficients of the sine series. And of course, C5 is equal to 1 over 20, and C7 minus 1 over 7 factorial, as you see over here, right? So uh, we can write down the first four terms of the inverted series, which is what you see here, or more commonly seen as follows. So as an exercise, and to convince yourself that this process works for any convergent power series, you can try to uh, do the reverse process. So in other words, find arc sine of x starting with sine of x polynomial. In other words, start with this one and use this process that's described in this article, to which I'll place a link, also to go back to the arc sine. Okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. And I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation. And what I wanted to mention earlier and I forgot is I didn't show you uh, uh, interactively or dynamically, but this arc length is always equal to this uh, angle, and this arc length is always equal to that angle. And I'll probably place a link to this applet too. And of course, I have a much easier way of deriving the sine series than Newton did, which I have not shared, uh, which I might at some future future time share with you. All I can do is give you a clue that it does involve the trisectrix and the work of Hippias, okay? And that's pretty much it. Please spread the news of this channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to click like because there is an active movement to suppress my work, to label me as a crank, to have me continue being uh, an outcast from the mainstream. Uh, because mainstream professors are very jealous of me. They're pathetic, dishonest cranks who don't care about the truth, don't care about pedagogy, don't care about mathematics. Uh, and the majority of them are spineless cowards, especially the ones that work at MIT and Harvard and all the so-called Ivy League universities. So I'm going to stop here. Until next time, this is a new calculus channel. And my name is John Gabriel. Goodbye.